good morning, this is Houndog Steve, wishing you a very pleasant morning. And uh, yes, it's getting on towards uh, 11 o'clock and I just don't work so well in the heat anymore, so I'm taking a little break. And um, I mentioned before that I am filing a human rights complaint uh, about a person who refused to give me service uh, over a mask uh, issue. And uh, seeing as this is the first time I've ever done this, I thought I'd go through this process with you just in case uh, you want to do this thing yourself or you have, um, you're in this situation and I would encourage as many people to push back on this a little bit. It costs you nothing, okay, it costs you nothing to file this claim. You just have to do it properly, okay. Uh, I've been through this before. Uh, I self-represented myself in a court case where I sued the uh, police um, to a settlement and uh, so I basically cut my teeth I've learnt my lessons the hard way and so I'm going to try and pass on some of this information to you. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this person is a provincially licensed business and if you're a provincially licensed business uh, you have to follow the protocols of the health unit in your particular region and this is uh, the Hall Hall Halliburton of course, sorry, the Halliburton Quarth Lakes Pine Ridges Health Unit. Okay, and so this is uh, directly off their website, and it says no one should be denied service if they cannot wear a mask. Uh, the next example is um, who is exempt from this instruction? Uh, for any other medical reason, the person cannot safely wear a non-medical mask or face covering, such as, but not limited to, respiratory disease, cognitive difficulties, or difficulties in hearing or processing information, or any religious reasons. Okay, so they're telling you, for any, any other medical reason. Okay, it then goes on to tell you, Okay, how is this to be implemented? Implementation of this policy will be enacted and enforced in good faith and will be primarily used as a means to educate people on mask use in public spaces. Again, no one should be denied service if they cannot wear a mask. Oh, and this is the bit uh, the, uh, it says here, that for privacy reasons, if you are someone who is responsible for a place of business or facility that is indoors and open to the public, you cannot ask patrons the reason they cannot wear a mask. All you are required to do is make patrons and members of the public aware of the mask use requirement. So they've told you right there, for any reason, any medical reason, and that doesn't have to be a doctor's reason, that could be you feel claustrophobic. Uh, you feel overwhelmed, maybe you had some issues as a child, you know, whatever that is, and they cannot ask you what that reason is, and they cannot deny you service, especially, you see, if this was a completely private business, it might be a different matter, but when you have a provincial license to operate, you move into the province's realm and all of these rules apply to you. And so, as I say, because this is uh, a mask issue, and many of you may be running into situations like this, uh, like I say, that th these are your arguments that you're going to present, and they're they're ironclad because you know if anybody says, well, they're your words, they're not my. I didn't make them up. You wrote them down. I'm just telling you what the health unit wrote down, and they can take these off. Okay, I actually had someone told me off the record who works for the health unit, that these exemptions will never be taken off because the government knows that for some people there can be harmful health side effects connected to mask wearing and that creates a liability and the government wants to be able to say if you make a claim against them, well, we told you that for any reason you know, you you volunteered. You decide that, and that's how the government does its business. You have to you have to remember this when you're dealing in these situations. This is how they do their business. They will turn that around. And say, well, you had the choice. You didn't read the rules. They were there, and nobody, the person that I am taking to the um, the tribunal, they haven't read the rules. There you go. And I again, I will encourage everybody to read the rules because these exclusions, they're always there because the government needs to have a plausible uh, deniability to excuse 
liability okay and say that you put the onus back onto you that it was your responsibility to find out okay now I'm gonna link the form uh, that you fill out it's um, an online application and uh, so you can go to a library to do this or go to a friend's house if you don't have a computer or the access to the internet uh, you can uh, very easily download it I'll put the link uh, in the video below and uh, here I'll show you a quick shot of the page it's very very straightforward and right at the top um, there is um, an applicant's assistance page and shows you how to fill it out explains everything uh, it is actually in very easy to understand language so it doesn't need much explanation and uh, here is the uh, printed out copy of the claim uh, a form that you get online and of course you have to print that off too uh, all uh, 17 pages of it uh, of course it's very easy it's a lo there's lots of parts that are not filled in there's just certain sections and um, I might also add at this juncture that this is for the province of Ontario okay so uh, you'd have to do this in each individual province and uh, but I'm sure they're pretty much similar you know they all follow the same guidelines However, because it's online, you know, you click send, it goes down to them. Now, when that, when you start this stuff, the first thing you do is you make a file. Okay, you make a file, you put all of your evidence in that file. Anything that you do, like I had to um, send off because it's online, uh, I couldn't send this. So this has to be sent to them uh, by snail mail, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to register that, okay? Here's a, uh, from the post office, so you can track it and you can make sure that it was picked up at the other end by the right people because anything that is going to be said at this trial, if it's not in this file, if it's not in the judge's or the commissioner's hands, it won't be recognised. So everything you do has to be put into this file, everything you send off, you both have to have an identical set of information. And uh, so anyway, I phoned up yesterday, I got my case number, they've received my, uh, my uh, claim. And um, I uh, sent that off now to them by registered post and uh, they will be sending a letter of confirmation to me about that. Now, I am not certain I haven't been told, but this is the way it works in a legal situation, is that the other party must also have this information. Okay, so I will be making up a package for this person, and I will be delivering it to uh, that person, whether they actually need it or not. I'm pretty certain they do, because that's the way it works. It's always in triplicate. You know, the commission has a copy, you have a copy, and the other party has a copy, because nothing can be discussed uh, without uh, every party being present. Uh, so that is the big key, is prep yourself up, get your evidence together, put it in a file so it's in one place so you can access it immediately, ensure that everything that is in your file, everything that you want to say is in the application because this is your only chance you can't they, they said that if uh, it says right on there if you redo if you send in the second application over the same issue only the first application will be recognized okay so you have to bear that in mind and so read it reread it reread it and reread it again and maybe get a friend to read it just to make sure that you filled in all of those spaces and that you have put down everything that you want to say about your situation. Um, and as I say, make sure that the other party is appraised of this. Okay, so uh, I hope that is helpful to anybody. And steal yourself, it'll be a process. Uh, no doubt it'll be time consuming. Uh, it will be awkward time consuming. Luckily, I'm retired now, so my time is my own. And so I can attend tribunals um, and there will be some expense to that. But uh, I believe that making these, like, be clear, either we are mandatory or we're obligatory. Mandatory, mandatory means no exceptions. Obligatory means you're obliged. There are exceptions and there are exceptions. So it's clearly not, not mandatory. So uh, I am going to hopefully make them eat their own words. It will be very interesting to see uh, what happens next. As I say, 
they've received my claim. Uh, they, I've sent off my evidence and I should be receiving a letter from them very shortly and there'll be more information and I will keep you updated in videos to come. Okie dokie. Well, I hope that's helped and I hope it does help uh, you going forward if you get into this situation. Okay, you take care. You have a great day now. And in the meantime, this is Houndog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant morning and we'll talk very, very shortly. See you now. Bye.